I really would love for everybody to come forward. I see there are people back at the door. It would be great if you all right now use this opportunity to come forward and closer to us. We really want to see your beautiful, happy faces. Yes, and you, you from there as well, please. <laughs> Thank you. It is an absolute honor for me to be able to present our wonderful, brilliant, bright, President of Estonia, Kersti Kaljulaid. Welcome to Tallinn, everybody, and thank you, Helen, for your extremely kind words. The Tallinn Music Week is an um, interdisciplinary festival. Its musical approach has always been to cross borders and fences, or even more, deny that these fences ever existed. The Tallinn Music Week is not dedicated to a specific style of music. Listeners are expected to keep an open and inquisitive mind and to be prepared to listen to something they have never heard before, needed or even wanted to hear before. The contribution made by the Italian Music Week to the society is exactly the same. There are no borders, no opposites, no fences. Creative thinking is creative thinking because it has no boundaries, whether it serves art or the entire society. The routine way of thinking tends to go in opposites, mutually exclusive opposites, city or country, urban or rural lifestyle, Comfortable or sustainable life? The young or the old? Career or children? Creative work or accounting? This limiting attitude is created by and is most suitable for societies where the key to success lies in opposition. Unfortunately, our democratic process is also largely built on opposition, polarization. And the higher the level of technical per perfection achieved by the opposing processes, the less room there is for crossing the fences and creatively generating compromises. Two-party systems are the first that have fallen foul to this phenomenon. There is no longer space for the complex world in the debate. Here in Estonia, we should be more resilient with our proportionate model. Still, Every time elections are approaching, also before local government elections, for example, we see the same approach as well. Is it going to be us or you who will prevail? I know here we will all try to be very different this week. We will try to erase our customary thought patterns and try to find the common part. In a world where, within a century, only horse carts and petroleum lamps were made redundant for good, it was possible to have disputes about two views, two forecasts, two paths for development. You could choose to be liberal or conservative. You could lean left or you could lean right. But in a world where most of the state-of-the-art technologies become obsolete in 30, or more recently even in three years maybe, we can never expect to create value by long-term planning that relies on simplified assumptions and is therefore, by definition, too poor to predict how we should act. The time of 30-year plans for the future is over. However, the time for vision, that is not over. There are universal and wide principles which we can define and agree that we collectively want them and need them. These visions must mostly describe our dreams, and they can function in any technological or socio-economic formation. We know the basics, luckily. We know that, like us, our grandchildren will also have the humanistic desire to be happy. Only those who are free, they can be happy. Only those who are educated can be free. There will be many free and happy people in the future. But 
only if they leave room for the dreams of others when making their own dreams. Technology will overcome some of the contradictions I mentioned at the beginning. Renewable energy will prevail. We just don't know yet whether it will be achieved by importing energy from the sun-rich regions to our latitudes via long-distance DC cables, or by the world of micro-production without any large network connections at all. The city and the country lose their meaning once jobs are no longer dependent on our location. The future of the work is changing. The people's roles on the labor market in the next 20 years will be very different than what we know now. A person, not an enterprise, becomes the unity of economic development. Working at the same time for different sectors, different countries, different objectives. The jobs that previously disappeared from agriculture, they are now disappearing from industry and some also from the traditional service sector. But every day offers new opportunities. We do not know the opportunities of tomorrow. We do not know the opportunities of our children in 10 years' time. But what is really beautiful about this change is that the new opportunities seem to be more democratic in their nature than in the customary model they were. Yes, we are surrounded by a very complicated technological environment, but this environment does create opportunities for very simple ideas. Ideas that are not particularly high-flying can be born in this environment and grow very large. Of course, there are Skype and Clevero, but also Uber, Airbnb and YouTubers. There are people who like to provide niche services or products that is needed by enough people in the world to keep one provider going on the market if this market is global. Last century, for example, you could not survive by making pieces of green glass into earrings. There simply were not enough takers in the physical environment surrounding you. But globally there is enough, and reaching out to them is magnificently simple nowadays. There is enough creative space for absolutely everyone. Self-realization, realizing your dreams, this is accessible to everyone interested in pursuing their dreams. So, our future is an explosive growth of individual opportunities. Where does this growth come from? We must make these choices ourselves, together with our families, our community, and ultimately with the state and other countries. Happiness is the compass. The multitude of choices depends on education, but not always on the traditional education. Everything can be education in the future. We don't know what will be education in the future. Absolutely everything appears and disappears constantly, all the time. The task of your conference is pass this message on to our society and to our guests. Yes, everything changes. We don't know in which direction. But let's not be afraid. For as long as we have many different opinions, different ideas and thoughts, there will always be something that carries us through to the future. If we look for one idea, one truth, one strategy, then we will soon find ourselves in the fossil layer. We can see here in Estonia the advantage of being a small country, but only when running our state changes as quickly and flexibly as the society and technology changes. The whole social model this must also be reconsidered to give people reassurance. But it is increasingly more connected with supporting the inner security of people, their families and communities, and less with the external feeling of security always provided by the state. When the time is up for the industry-based economic model, unfortunately it is certainly up also for the social models built on the logic of the same area. Because only in Alice in Wonderland does the cat disappear and the smile will stay. In the real world, that never happens. When the world revolved around the constant reuse and recreation of the invention
dimensions of just few. The processes were predictable. Education met the requirements of the labor market and work, holidays and pension could be defined for decades in advance. When the human world creates new value on the basis of the diversity emerging from the creativity of the majority of people, where value creation is by definition intermittent, the social contributions and taxes paid, they will become similarly intermittent. The role of the state and local government and cities will be to gather the intermittent tax streams and try to create the constant stream of support and security for people. Obviously, it will not be similar to anything we know today. Transition periods are always difficult and expensive. And the only good thing is that the community will no longer be based on a single socio-economic formation, the replacement of which could be perceived as a knock in them. The constant changing of many small worlds and constant adaptation to new technologies and new dreams, this is certainly smoother. The Tallinn Music Week is a good test polygon of the new society. Today, here on the conference, you can try out all your ideas, argue, argue all your arguments and create the common ground. Here you can think away all contradictions and make room for all different opinions. Think about how to use technology to overcome contradictions. And if that is not an option, then think how to talk yourself and your conversation partner through those contradictions so that finally they will simply dissolve. Show us what the resourceful spirit and flexible mind can achieve. Show us also what a real campaign on the ideas to the benefit of our city, our Tallinn, idealistically could be. Raise the bar high. And then it will be very good to see if in the autumn, when the traditional form of debate settles in, the local government elections come, can that discussion then jump the bar set by you here today? Give us a strong benchmark, please. And thank you for your attention. such a brilliant president, don't we? Another applause. <laughs> and, uh, don't we just love the challenge we've been giving right now? Set the bar high and give us something to aim towards. So let's take this seriously. The president has really spoken. <laughs> but now is the chance for me to introduce another wonderful person uh, from a very important company and institution to us through several years. Um, I couldn't imagine how we could be doing uh, this festival without the support of Nordia Bank and all the other supporters. But uh, on this journey, Nordia Bank has really been playing a very important role to us. And uh, I would love to invite on stage uh, Mr. Gerd Müller, the head of Nordia Estonia. Thanks.